Hey guys, stay tuned for my interview with Louis Bachner, who is the videographer behind the beautiful music video for my song, Time to Move On. He's based out of the West Kootenai in British Columbia, and he's a hilarious and fascinating person to interview. You guys are going to really enjoy it. What inspired you to get into photography and then into film or video? Uh, it's not like, a, I, it's a funny story. It's not like a super uh, inspiring story, but uh, I was in high school and uh, was pretty lazy. And so I saw that they were doing a photography course. And I was like, that's probably pretty easy. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Please. So I, t so I took it and, uh, and it was not easy at all. Cause you had, the, just, you had like the dark room, you had like the. Totally. It was all film. It was hard, and, but I just loved it. And I just, um, was in there all the time and I would like skip other classes and go in the dark room because if someone tried to come and get me out of the dark room, I could just tell them that they couldn't open the door. Or they'd wreck everything. <laughs> You so you'd have like you'd have like the math teacher at the door being like hey you gotta come back to class and i'd be like no oh, you can't come in here like i got all this stuff going on you're gonna wreck it and stuff uh so that was sort of like how i started i guess uh and then uh and then it kind of just went from there i got a digital camera maybe when i was 19 or something and then i went to school for photojournalism in 20 well and then the video stuff uh kind of just came around it seems like um yeah people are just in interested in video like they always ask about video work and then i got an opportunity to work on a documentary project about climate change that was a really bizarre and interesting experience uh but it sort of just threw me into the deep end because he asked me if it, he asked me it's a crazy story but he asked me if i wanted to be on his crew and he'd gotten my business card like three years before and i never heard from him i barely remember talking to the guy and he called me cold called me and was like hey you want to be on my crew and i was like well i don't really do that much video like i'm more of a stills guy and he was like you know he basically was like well i would just fake it till you make it if i were you and i was like Dude. okay <laughs> And so we went on a shoot and then like the main filmer got stopped at the border and couldn't come into the States. And so I ended up being like the only one there. I was the guy. And that's just sort of had been how it went for like a year. And I learned a lot. Can you tell the people a little bit about where you live? Because it's, it's an amazing place. And if people have never been to the Kootenays before, it's uh, definitely a place that people should visit at least once, I believe, in their life. Yeah, so I live uh, at the north end of Kootenai Lake um, in this little community called Argenta. And I was born here. There's somewhere between 100 and 150 people in the community. Yeah, it's been a huge part of me, certainly. Like, I've left and, and come back several times. What keeps you coming back to Argenta? Because it is such a, I mean, obviously, when you're born somewhere, you've got it a special connection you usually have a special connection to that place but is there mm -hmm. something about it's just the is it the pace of life is it being surrounded by all the the forest and the lake and the beauty just for your mm -hmm. for your soul mm -hmm. yeah i think definitely both of those things also being surrounded by family like for sure there's just family everywhere so that's a big part and then yeah the beauty certainly the pace it's allowed me to have a lot of freedom as an artist like I would live a lot differently if I lived in the city, just like with bills and overhead and like that kind of stuff, you got to grind, you know, yeah. whereas here you have this sort of beautiful gift of having time on your hands. Most people have that. So you like show up at someone's house uninvited and it's like, oh yeah, I can drop what I'm doing. Like, come on in, like, let's chat. It's nice to see you. Or like you need a hand with somebody, somebody's available or someone else needs a hand and you drop what you're doing and you go help them in and so there's kind of this reciprocal relationship that happens that there's no like burden of owing anybody anything it's just a really natural thing that I think occurs within small groups and this community is like small enough that it can occur 
not just on a family scale, but on a slightly larger scale where you have relationships with people where you would do whatever they wanted, you know, if they need help, you're there and there's no um, expectation of getting anything. You know? One of the reasons I wanted to work with you again is because there's a richness to your work, it's a richness of story. There's a richness of a narrative because I was looking at some of these pictures and I was like, man, that picture I could start that's like a jumping off point for like a song. I could like mm -hmm. look at look at a picture and be like, wow, how did that how did that guy get into the boat, uh, into that boat in the middle of the lake? Like, what's he, what's he, you know, what's going through his mind? What's going? What's on his heart? Or the picture? I think it's your wife on the on the porch, um, spinning wool. Spinning wool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Stacks of uh, willow. Stacks yeah exactly yeah. and i'm just like man it's not just the richness in terms of the the color and, and the contrast it's it's this it's this a story inside mm -hmm. the picture how much of how much of that uh do you draw inspiration from like for for your work yeah the photos i shared are sort of of this ongoing project I guess I'm working on it's like still very much in the creation phase like collection phase of imagery but because of the pandemic I've been in Argenta more than ever so often I'm traveling um so since what in March or April of last year I've been here year, like a lot and so it's allowed me to kind of document um the community in a more natural way somehow like this community you just it takes time like it's not a project where I feel like I could rush it and so often it's just what comes about you I'm in the right spot and and so just to say that I think those photos are very intimate you know um like yeah there's one of my wife there's one of my mother kind of burning a, a burn pile and it's like her hand you, that's the part of that image that really speaks to me is her sort of like aging hand uh then one is yeah my cousin's husband and his daughter fishing in the lake and then one is my like very dear friend and neighbor Tama and my other friend Vince who's this old farmer and they're working their horses together and in actually my wife and I's field they offered to plow our field I think that having those like relationships with your subject, something will come through in, in that ex the, the story that you have with them as a photographer. I think we have this idea that like a, a photojournalist should be really uh, like unbiased and like just witness, like your job is to witness, that's it, you know, and you're not involved. But I think that for me telling these stories, I want to be like, involved i want to recognize that i'm a part of the story and i want to recognize that my relationship with my subjects is really important and feeling a bit of like responsibility if someone offers to share their story that there is a bit of responsibility on you as a storyteller to do that well and do that authentically and with um to just honor that trust i think that they're giving you and so i think all of that comes through in an image in some subtle way somehow well I just want to give a big thank you, Louis, because uh, I, I just appreciate you so much. And I appreciate the fact that you jumped on board on this project. You've given me a gift that's, that's enormous, my friend, that's going to be there for the rest of my life. And, and I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. And I'm going to share uh, with my audience, too, your, your Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe not your Facebook. <laughs> Don't share my Facebook page. Go to the Facebook. Instagram, where else can they? Louisbachter.com. Yeah, website. Website and Instagram. My Facebook business page is, uh, yeah, inactive. Inactive. You know, but inactive to the like point of what is it? like atrophy or like where you just are inactive so long that you're just dead basically yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're living you're flourishing uh another platform sure yeah my facebook page is in a coma of sorts uh <laughs> that's better yeah the yeah. coma Coma. Coma. yeah well, people are going to be in for a treat your 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 work is amazing yeah your work thank you thank so, you yeah, yeah. Thanks, Maria. Yeah, you have a great one. Okay.
We'll talk to you soon.